many of us perhaps could have missed that week. Uh, I felt bad. But then, there are some words that he shared within that week, of which I want him to re-echo a little bit for emphasis. In one of the sermons that he preached, he's going to talk about it. And maybe after that, I can also say some, something still about the same. Because it touched me, it touched everyone. It is something that I also talked about some time back. But of course, when he brought it up, again, it made more sense. Something I want him to talk about this particular hour. Pastor, please. God is good. And all the time. Our Bibles attain to 2 Corinthians and the chapter is chapter 8 and verse 1 up to verses 5. I would love that they project it in the shortest possible time. We just go through it. Give me a version that is easy for everybody to understand. 2 Corinthians and the chapter is 8 and verse 1 up to five. I'll read in your earring since the projection is taking a bit of time. If you are there, say amen. And my Bible reads in Second Corinthians chapter eight, verse one up to five. The Bible says, Our brothers and sisters, we want you to know what God's grace as accomplished in the churches in Macedonia. They have been severely tested by the troubles they went through. But their joy was so great, they were extremely generous in their giving, even though they were very poor. I can assure you that they gave as much as they could, even more than they could. Of their own free will, verse 4, they begged us and pleaded for the privilege of having a part in helping God's people in Judea, verse 5. It was more than we could have hoped for. First, they gave themselves to the Lord, and then by God's will, they gave themselves to us as well. May the Lord bless the reading of this word. Amen. What a paradox. Paul is talking about a church at this time when there was persecution. But as Paul is speaking about this church, he says, number one, they were extremely poor. Number two, they were troubled by persecution and the wars that were going, going around. But irrespective of the poverty and the persecution that was there, they gave generously to the cause of God. Now, I want to submit to all of us who are here that number one, doctrine and duty are inseparable. No matter how many times you, you attend church service, you can cross your Bible from Genesis to Revelation and it is green because you have read it very well. But as long as you read the doctrine and do not perform the duties, then you are not doing that which Christ has obliged you to do. This church was poor, but they gave. Therefore, doctrine and duty are inseparable. Number two, there are those of us who are attached to Christ but detached from the church. We cannot be attached to Christ and be, be, be detached from the church. As long as we are attached to Christ, we have the sole responsibility also to be attached to the responsibilities of the church. There is sovereign responsibility and human responsibility. God takes care of that. Of us that is sovereign responsibility human responsibility requires us to do something for the wake of Christ hallelujah last but not the least you can give without loving but you cannot love without giving church of God are we together you can give without loving but you cannot love without giving 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for our salvation and my salvation. Brothers and sisters, if we love Christ so much, we are going to give for the cause of his church. I'm standing here to promote the power of 10. During the stewardship week of prayer, we agreed that every Sabbath, 700 of us, if we can give 10,000, how much is that? How much is that? So every Sabbath, we must not be raising 200, 300. Our God is not so poor. We are not so vulnerable. If every Sabbath, me, the pastors, the elders, and all of us can give 10,000, 700 of us, it means every Sabbath will be raised in 7 m for the cause of the church. Least you forget, this is not our church. Church of God, are we together? This is not our church, it's for the union. Our church is that one, that one. And that's why we are going to give the power of 10. I have my 10,000. I hope you have your 10,000. Please, let's give and raise. At least today, since you didn't attend the stewardship week of prayer and you were not there when we made the agreement, at least today, let's not raise 200. Let's not raise 400. Let's raise above a million. Hallelujah, church. So if you have something for the wake of God, please, let's give. Gracious, loving Father, as your children give, I pray that you touch our hearts, our minds, so that we give for a sanctuary. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May the deacon and deaconesses take charge. Thank you, uh, Pastor. Please, deacons, let's do our part. My turn is here. I pass by and pick it as well. Uh, dear friends, I want to tell you what is going on at the, at the site. You need to pass by if you have not passed by. We are trying to connect now the, our church, our English church. The other time when I was here, I showed you, you know, how far we have moved. And uh, sincerely, when you get there, we are connecting that part, our church. Now, emphasis is on our church. Uh, basically, our part, this side. And uh, pastor was here, he told you, <laughs> he made uh, a serious pledge here uh, that he will not preach on this pulpit uh, in January next year. That is serious faith. And so, friends, last Sabbath we were able to collect 400 and, uh, 480 something. Thank you. But then, yeah, we can do better. We can do better. Sincerely, if each one of us, and we intend to remind you by the within the week as well, that just come with that 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. By the end of this year, that church should be up. And we are to worship from there. And um, I want to share with you this experience I've gone through this week. I've been receiving calls, and we're going to discuss this with the elders in the council. But I want the church also to know about it. You know, um, they were telling me, Pastor, yeah, you are the church pastor of KCC, yes. But we are calling on behalf of our, our friends who are to conduct a wedding in the hall, which, you, which is your church. <laughs> ah, these people had courage. <clears throat> Pastor, we want to use that place for our wedding. Please kindly. Now, to use this place. And also, you know, it is Sabbath, yeah, it may encroach on Sabbath, but we are decorators and we want to decorate that place. Ah, I said, Banange. Pastor, we hired that place. Eh, these people were tough. And we need it. We have, new, uh, the, 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 we have new concepts we are bringing in that place and we cannot decorate within just a few hours. And so we shall need even some hours of the Sabbath. Ah. That's why I said, people, we need to leave this place. And go to where we call a church. Our place we call a church. This one is a whole, a whole, a whole. A wedding hall. I don't want to add something. Which add something and then you put hall. Ah. These people.
pews you are seated on, they pile them and they throw them that aside. And then this one becomes a hole. I want you to feel that pain. You know, when you come on Sabbath and this place you know, is well organized by the deacons, I want to tell you, you say, wow, this is a nice place. This is worth worshiping from. Ah, no, 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 no. We need to go to our place. We need to go to our place and worship from there. And so, we are going to discuss this matter. The wedding is so soon, and so whatever will come from the elders' council, ah, don't be surprised to find when this place is again looking different <laughs> on a given summer. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, leaving that aside, please kindly support Jack. Uh, headquarters on Ndegeya Road. Um, if you wish to join, can you kindly note down these numbers and call the head, the principal? Uh, the numbers are 0701 35 39 57. All you can reach them on 039 48 01 Thirty-eight, seven. Uh, the Bible School Department is inviting family heads, stroke, um, evangelism, and worship leaders in a brief meeting immediately after divine in the choir's corner. This is the choir's corner. So immediately the, the choir leaves, you are invited to have a meeting there. Uh, the Deaconary Department wishes to inform all church members to, re to remind you that you should take care of God's property. Uh, whenever you take chairs outside, kindly remember to bring them in the church and also handle them with care. There, there will be also a Deaconary meeting immediate at exactly 3 p.m. in the Children's Chapel. So Deaconesses and, deacon and, and Deacons you are welcome to that meeting. There will be elders council today at 4 p.m. in the usual place. Um, I, would, I, would, I would wish to inform you that we will have our Pastor Shuka's me wedding meetings at around 6.30 p.m. You are welcome to join us. We have some wedding bells. What do we say, church? Um, our pastor, Sally Emmanuel Chisache, a man, son of Mr. and Mrs. the late Sally of former Lekawempe, village Rugoba, sub-county of the uh, Chiebando sub-county in Wakiso district, wishes to be joined in a holy matrimony with Nam Genyilian, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Mokasa Francis of Guafu, Namiriango Village, Goma, sub county in Mukono District on 19th March at Bunga Central Church. If there is anyone with a, genuine, with a genuine reason why the two should not be joined in the holy matrimony, please declare it now or forever remain silent. Um, we have our brother Kavuma Samuel, son of Mr. and Mrs. Dalet. George William Lugowa of Formale Kibula Kabakedi Village Ruero District Ruero Sub County wishes to be joined in holy matrimony with Mulunji Immaculate, the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. The, of the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Ruhonjeka William, I beg your pardon, of Undeje, Makindye, of Makindye, Sabagabo Village, Sub County Makindye, and Wakiso District, on 2nd of 4th, I beg your pardon, on 2nd of April in Bunga at 10 a.m. If there is a genuine reason why the two should not be joined in the holy matrimony, please declare it now and forever remain silent. 
Amen to our bagoles. I don't know if Mr. Uh, Mr. Samuel Kavma is around and our sister Mulunji Imachulet. If you are around, please stand up. Oh, they are not around. We'll see them next time. May God bless their preparation, their preparations. Uh, today we are blessed with, this, with visitors. Um, our first visitor was uh, to write in our book is Ogenrod John from Kitgum Central Church. Message, nice to be here. Can, can our brother stand up and wave to us? Brother John. Brother John, you are welcome in the special way at Kampala Central Church. Please make that place your seat forever. I request the person next to him to welcome him in the special way. You are welcome indeed. Uh, we have another visitor, Kenya Najole from Kasana Ruero. Nice to be here. Sister jo Jolie, you are welcome to Kampala Central Church. Uh, we have a very, very, very special visitor called Kemgawa Patience from Makerere University. Please, sister, stand up and wave to us. Amen. You are welcome, sister. Be blessed. We have another sister, Natia Joskovia, from St. Francis Hospital Training School in Zambia. God will take care of you. That is her message to church. May God bless you. We have another special visitor called Mr. Charles Atika from Nyagichenche Church. Uh, that is Southern Kenya Conference. Brother, you are welcome. May God bless you. Um, we have a special, a special visitor. Uh, that is uh, Sister Kim Gabo Patience. Please come and receive us a gift. Pastor, I would like to welcome you to handle this gift to our our, our visitor. You are so welcome. Please come back again. I request the choristers to come and welcome the whole church. the choristers are coming uh, God is good and all the time uh, the power of 10 so far we have managed to raise 889 200 what do you say church yeah. now here is what we are going to do all of you have entered this church next Sabbath all of us if we can come with 10,000 and all of us who cannot manage if we can come with 5,000 if because I've seen we are more than a thousand here so 1,000 by 5,000 is how much church mathematicians I left school a long time ago yeah how much is that 9 million thank you thank you so next Sabbath we are bringing 9 million hallelujah all of us 5,000 multiplied by 1,000 that is 9 million and so 12 million. <laughs> you people, yeah? mathematicians, you're embarrassing me. My fiance is here. <laughs> the lady might run away that I'm marrying a man who doesn't even know mathematics. But we shall overcome your dramatic. So, and I've been told there is somebody bringing more money. So today we have reached a target. Hallelujah. So next Sabbath, all of us, let's contribute. Me, I've told you, Pastor, I will not preach here in January. I will not. I will just live with my wife back to Zambia. Hallelujah. Another good news, every Friday and Wednesday, those of you who have been asking me with Pastor, we are beginning physical and online worship. Hallelujah. We are going to be having prayers and we are going to be having physical and online worship every Friday and Wednesday. Me and the pastor will be here jumping on the pulpit every Friday and what? Wednesday. If you need prayers, just come. If you need anything, just come every Friday and Wednesday. We shall be here in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
for God and my country. Choristers, can you come, please? <laughs> you see, I'm slowly becoming a Ugandan. Choristers, this is a day. Can we rise? shall be beginning from 7 p.m. to 8.30. Yes. Yeah, we are going to oh, welcome our elder. Happy Sabbath, church. We praise the Lord for having allowed us to come and worship him this morning for our call to worship we shall pick it from Luke chapter 18 verse 7 oh, sorry it's Romans 12 2 the other one is our text huh? Romans 12 2 and I will read and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed to renewing of to the renewing of your minds together, that ye may prove that what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. God bless you.
Shall we pray? My Father and God in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to worship you. Continue blessing us with your presence as we worship you, for we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath once again. We indeed praise the Lord for giving us this opportunity to come and worship Him on a beautiful Sabbath like this when our mothers, mothers of the nation and our mothers in church and family are leading. Praise the Lord. Today is Women's Day in the Adventist Church, and so it's also Women's Day at uh, SDA Kampala Central Church. If you look around, you can see sky blue. All those in sky blue, please wave. Yes, thank you ladies for donning and supporting the cause of uh, ladies. Today, serving you, we have uh, Kampala Central Church Choir. Could you wave to the church? Amen. Uh, we are also serving with God Family. God Family, wherever you are, please wave. Thank you, God Family, led by Elder Professor Golola. And so, God family will also give us a song. Yes, so we, we can expect music from the church choir, God family, plus women's uh, choir. So, we, we have enough music today. Uh, we have a team doing the sign language interpretation. May God bless you. Yes, uh, Please greet those friends of ours for whom you are sign, uh, signing for. We, we have a team behind the scene, and that is the public address system team led by Brother Njuguna Jacob. May God bless you. And uh, we, we have uh, Brother Eric Senyonga. Uh, accompanying uh, our our singing. Um, thank you all. And uh, yes, at the pulpit we have uh, Mrs. Sarah Tamale Namaganda. Amen. Amen. We have uh, Mrs. Rachel Baleta. Amen. Amen. And uh, myself, Amelda, Dr. Sol Muyigwa Mubanda. I happen to be the elder in charge of uh, ladies this year. Ladies, I greet you. Amen. Yes, uh, we've been blessed uh, to have a special uh, woman of God that is... Uh, Mrs. Engineer Rachel Bitamazide. Engineer Rachel Bitamazide works with uh, Umeme. Uh, she's a wife of Pastor Engineer Nicholas Bitamazide. <laughs> I, I, I was telling her I'm looking forward to the products of two engineers, electrical engineers. Huh? God is good, huh? yes. Huh? This year, this uh, women's department is led uh, by Mrs. Jemima Sentongo. Amen. Amen. Assisted by uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Mrs. Rachel Semuko. She's here. I was trying to. Okay, she's right here. So may God bless you, and as you lead 
the great women of this church. Uh, this afternoon, there is a program for ladies, uh, organized by the ladies at 2.30. Please come, come and hear what they have in stock for you and for us all. I'm also informed that uh, the elders have uh, a council at uh, 4 p.m. Please turn up at the usual venue. Uh, at this moment, before we sing the opening song, I'll invite Mrs. Rachel Semko to come and lead us in the women's anthem. Amen. Stand up, please. Adventist women arise, rise to preach the word of God, get united in Jesus. Know your God, you play your role, fight ignorance and abuse. continue with the opening hymn.
praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We'll humbly kneel down and talk to our Father. Let us pray. Our Father, our King, our Savior, our friend, we want to thank you so much for this moment that you brought us in your presence. We want to thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Sabbath day on which we rest from all our cares of this world and come to present to you whatever we request, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, for the week that you brought us through. It's been a tough week, but we want to thank you, Lord, because wherever we kneel down to you, you come through for us. We want to pray, Lord, that you forgive us. We are sinners, not worthy to be even called your children. But thank you for your word that tells us that even if our sins are red as, as, as crimson, you wash them as white as snow. And so, Lord, we boldly come to you as your children, coming to reason together with you. How I pray that, Lord, you listen to our petitions this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, it's on the Sabbath day that, Lord, we gather to call upon you as a church father, the Seventh-day Adventist church. We want to pray that whoever is kneeling down in this congregation, I pray that you listen to the cry of your children. In this church, we have families. Father families have children. We have a fathers, we have mothers, Lord. I want to pray for every member of the family that, Lord, you meet them at their points of need. Our children are facing a lot of challenges at school, challenges of decisions. I pray that, Lord, may they be the Daniels wherever they are. May, be, may they be your witnesses. May they be able to discern between what is good and wrong. And my prayer is that, Lord, may our children stand for you wherever they are. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to pray for the ladies, the women in this church. Father, I pray that you continue to use us for your service. Father, may you unite us. May you empower us. May you, Father, humble us down at your cross. Because, Lord, when we pray as women, everything shall be well. We want to pray for our fathers in the families. I pray that, Lord, as you made them the heads of families, may you continue to make them the heads wherever they are. Bless them wherever they go. I pray that, Lord, you protect them from any, any challenges they meet. I pray that wherever they meet them, Father, may they kneel and worship you and call upon you for the solutions. Father, King of glory, we want to also pray for the singles, single ladies and gentlemen, wherever they are. I pray that, Lord, may you help them find the rightful spouses, Lord, that will understand them or the way they are and the spouses that will lead them to your kingdom that is yet to come. We can't forget to pray for the health, Lord. Diseases are rising each day, different ones, complicated ones that we can't even find solutions. Father, you are the great physician. You used to heal those days and you're still in the process, you're, in, you're still in the, in the business of healing. I pray that you touch whoever is sick, whoever has come here that is not well, I pray that your healing hand will move and touch whoever is in pain, whoever is groaning. I pray that you force the pain and make them well because, Lord, we believe that you are in our presence. Father, in the name of Jesus, amongst us the people who are not employed. You tell us, Lord, to work in the seventh days and, and, well, and rest on the, on the Sabbath day. 
Father, how can we rest when we are not working? My prayer, my plea this morning is that, Lord, whoever doesn't have what to do, may you provide them with what to do during the six days, that on the Sabbath day they will come with thanksgiving and praise. We can't forget to pray for the church. The KCC church is under construction, Lord. Father, where you're not, we cannot build. Father, I pray that you be the firm foundation of this church. Provide all the resources. We call upon, Lord, people from different directions to come and support this noble cause. Oh, how we long, Lord, to be in our church praising and glorifying you. My prayer, my plea this morning is that, Lord, use us, Lord, for your glory. Use us, Lord, for your work. Father, we can't forget to pray for our country. Father, we pray for the leaders of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the country. I pray that you be with the president, to be whoever is in charge of whatever they, wherever they are. How I pray that, Lord, you make them transparent, make them considerate of the lower people, Lord, that, Father, this country will be led to your kingdom. May they be able to discern between what is good and evil and stand against that is not right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to pray for the leadership of the church, starting from the general conference up to the, up to the lower departmentals and whatever is in, whoever is in charge of a new service, Lord. I pray that wherever they stand, O oh Lord, to serve you, may they disappear and you appear, that whatever words will be spoken by your leaders, Lord, will be words that will enhance your kingdom and hasten your first coming, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we can't forget to pray for the preacher of the hour. Thank you, Lord, for using her to serve you. Thank you, Lord, for giving her the words to speak. I pray, Lord, that as she, as she speaks to us, Lord, may you speak through her and may the words that will be spoken unto us enrich us and take us through this week until you come and take us to your heavenly kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for your word that tells us that wherever three, two or three are gathered in your, in your presence, you'll be amidst them. We believe that you're amidst us and believe that your will is going to be done and believe that these prayer requests that we've presented to you will be answered according to your will and according to what you think is best for us, for we've prayed, believing, and trusting in Jesus' name. church. Smile Jesus loves you. I'm very happy to stand before you and there is this special announcement that I need to pass on to you people. Wedding bells. Ankunda Amos, son of Mr. and Mrs. the late Baziaka Paul of, of Nkongoro Kamwenge village Kibale, sub-county Kibale, district Kamwenge, wishes to be joined in holy matrimony with 
Nira, Nguhira Jacqueline, date of Kirmunda Jackson, um, of Gi Gihimbi Bohozi Kisoro District on 8th of March 2023. And this is this coming weekend, week, in the middle of this week, at Bunga at 10 a.m. You are all invited. This is the final reading. The wedding is on Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken, but on Women's Day. So that means that we women, we are blessed. We are all invited. And gentlemen, as the anthem said, we work side by side with men. So we can't do without gentlemen. At this time, right now, I'll ask the deacons and deaconesses to take their positions. And as they take their positions, God family will also stand in front here. Then I humbly ask you to listen to this. Getting to know Jesus. Teresa had lived in the rugged hills of Ethiopia his entire life. Most of the country's 85 million people lived outside the cities surviving on the food they managed to grow in the dry, dusty soil. Each day, Teresa traveled by foot many miles to meet with the neighbors and church members. He speaks their language, their language. He knows their struggles. He is trusted by those around him. Teresa is a global mission pioneer. After sharing a Bible lesson and prayer, Telesa continues his journey to the next home. At times, the next home in eight hours journey, in an eight hours journey, the believers have a church of their growing congregation, a church Teresa built with his own money. Many people from this region of Ethiopia worship idols. They are haunted by suspicion and fear. Teresa tells them the story of Jesus and how he lived, how he delivered people from devils when he walked on this earth. Teresa invites them to learn more about Jesus, the Son of God, who loves them and wants them to live with him forever. Around the world, thousands of pioneers live like Teresa, are work, like Teresa are working to share God's message of love with those around them. With your support, Teresa is finding many who are hungry to know that God is more powerful than the devil, uh, that their idols are worthless. So he treks over the hillsides of Ethiopia sharing God's love to anyone who will listen. Please pray for our global mission pioneers and the people they work with. They call to go and tell the world that Jesus is coming soon. Cannot, they call to go and tell the, the, and tell the world that Jesus is coming soon cannot be maintained or expanded unless believers continue to give our offerings on the regular basis. Our offerings should ideally be given as a promise, a covenant with God. Faithfully, regularly giving a covenant proportional proportion to our earning to support the programs that to support the program that God has instituted to reach everyone on this earth so Jesus can come. If your promise offering, if your promise offering is distributed as suggested by the combined offering plan, which is recommended and promised by the general conference, then 50 to 60 percent help support the missionary work of your local church. 
20 to 30 percent support the regional missionary and missionary endeavors of your conference and 20 percent always support the world missionary fund or world budget producing balance support to all the world missionary endeavors of the church it is our duty to go to pray and to give so that others have an opportunity to meet Jesus one day. Let's humble ourselves and pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love to us, for we are sinners. We thank you that this time you are going to give in as you gave us, but you are returning what you gave us. Please accept it, and may you bless each and every one in this congregation, in your name we pray.
Let's humble ourselves and pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you once again to say thank you. We thank you for this time that we are still able to be before you. Bless all the hands that have given and all those who have not given. Help them to give next time when they are ready. Bless the offertory we've given in and let it do thy will. In Jesus' name we pray. Happy Sabbath once again. As as I read the scripture, I will invite the ladies ladies choir to come up front our scripture reading is taken from the book of Luke chapter 18 verse 7 Luke chapter 18 verse 7 it says and shall not God avenge his own elect who cry out to who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? It's a question and I pray that it will be answered this afternoon. Amen.
of the Lord's revelation. Each prophecy points to the great consummation, but we know. afternoon church. Happy Sabbath everyone. I welcome you all in the name of Jesus Christ and I thank God for the opportunity he has given us as women to celebrate the International Day, International Women's Day of prayer in the SDA church. We belong to the International Church, that's why I'm starting with that message because the message we are carrying is not in Kampala Central Church only but it's international. Praise God. Amen. Women, you are welcome to this day. The gentlemen around you are welcome, and we thank God for this day. The church has dedicated two days for the women in the SDA church. One is already the first Sabbath of March every year, and that's the International Women's Day of Prayer. The second one normally happens in June, and that one is called the Women's uh, women Ministries Emphasis Sabbath. It's because 
the women are doing a great job in the work of the gospel. And I know he's coming very soon. We don't know the hour, but he's coming. So we thank God for the opportunity to be able to celebrate this day together with the church. Amen. In a very special way, I bring you greetings from Bogema University, from our home, and also to thank God for the opportunity he has given us to serve with the women this Sabbath. Yes, uh, we are going to share a message that is entitled, Transformed by Prayer. But before we go into the message, we shall enjoy a message as a church through a song that we sang. Okay, I thought I had it here. He's working on it. But uh, before we go into the song, the reason I'm thinking so is because we can get a thought into the message, into why all this has been done. We thank God for the choirs that have presented. And uh, the message is just giving us hope. Today is an international day of prayer. A prayer that is coming in your ears. And the question was coming from Luke chapter 18 verse 7. And the Bible is saying, Jesus was telling a parable about a widow, a lady who was seeking justice. She kept coming to the judge. And the Bible says that this judge did not respect any person. He did not respect God. And when this person, the lady, kept coming, the man one day, the judge said, I think I have to avenge this woman so that she stops coming to worry me. So we derive our verse from there, and it says, And shall not God avenge his elect, who cry unto him day and night, who bear, though he bear with them long? In other words, if the judge who didn't know God is ready to bear justice, to give justice, how much more shall our God do when we cry unto him day and night in prayer? So as we go into the sermon, just know that whatever whisper you have as a prayer in your heart, God is listening and he's going to answer you in a very mighty way. Amen. Transformed by prayer. All right. I am not sure if we are able to read those words, but I'm going to request you a sing. The, star, the chorus it says that let the lower lights be burning send a gleam across the wave some poor fainting struggling seaman you may rescue you may save chorister please help me we go through the chorus then we start our message and request that we stand. Let the lower lights be burning. Let the lower lights be burning. Send a gleam across the Get seated. Transformed by prayer. The picture may not come out very well, but it's showing what we call the lighthouse. And alongside it are what we call the lower lights. Now, the lower lights are very important, those who have been by the lakeside or by the sea. The lighthouse is always a tower or a building or a structure. It's built in such a way that it projects light that can be able to guide the seaman as he comes closer to the harbor or to the dock. And when he comes closer, he needs the lower lights because the lower lights are able to show that here there is a rock, here it is okay, you can sail. And every time you're not able to see the lower lights, you are bound to crash. You're bound to go into the rocks 
and then you cannot make it to the harbor or to the dock. Now, that is interesting because uh, it's because uh, our interest is to see this morning what is the lighthouse? What is the use of the lighthouse? It projects the light on the waters. And then when the seaman is moving, normally when the ship is moving, it has a captain and it also has a pilot plus the passengers. So when the captain is able to see the, lo the lighthouse, he gets the joy of knowing that I'm near the harbor. I'm almost home. I'm almost at the dock, at the port. And so he knows I've sailed well. But it's not yet over until the lower lights can give the light to show that here is safe, here is not safe. Now it's very interesting because without the lower lights burning, no one can make it to the harbor. It's bound to crash, and that is what happened. A story is told. On one night, there was a storm on a sea. It's a lake actually called Lake Erie in North America. It's a true story. The ship was sailing. They had moved a long journey and they wanted to reach Cleveland Harbor, or a port in your case. And when it was very stormy, you couldn't see the stars in the sky. You could hardly see any light on the water. It was very dark, very stormy, very windy. And so the ship was being tossed around. And as it was being tossed around by waves like, that looked like mountain, the captain got concerned. And he continued to struggle through the waves until finally he was able to see the lighthouse. So he asked the pilot, is that the Cleveland? Is that the Cleveland Harbor? And the captain answered, yes, sir, it is the Cleveland Harbor. And then he said, where are the lower lights? Because he knew without the lower lights, you can't make it, much as you see the lighthouse. And the, the pilot answered and said, they've gone out, sir. He was worried. And then he said, can we really make it to the harbor? without the lower lights. And the pilot answered and said, we must, sir, else we perish in this storm. And the story ends by saying that because the lower lights were out, they couldn't make it. So the pilot gained strength, and with a mighty hand, he determined to turn the ship so that they can make it to the harbor. Unfortunately, he landed into rocks, the whole ship crashed and over 200 lives were lost. This morning, we are discussing something very important. Prayer. What is my role? What's your role as a prayer person in your life, as a Christian in this world? Shall we pray? Mighty Father and God in heaven, we are so grateful for the opportunity to hear from your word. You told us in your word that you're ready to avenge you're elect. You're ready to give justice to those who cry to you day and night. We humbly pray that you give us the patience to always wait on you, to be the lower lights that keep burning, to hold the arms of those who are fainting, so that that seaman who is fainting can be able to get to the harbor. It's our prayer that we can all make it, not only in this world, but to see you when you come to take us to heaven. Keep the lamps trimmed and burning, for we humbly pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we are discussing something that transforms the world, and it's none else but prayer. Prayer transforms everything that you can think about, starting with your life, my life, the life of your neighbors, the life of situations that may seem hard in your life. But it's until you make me prayer, When we talk about the lighthouse, Jesus Christ is the lighthouse. And he's taking care of the lighthouse of our salvation. So that me and you can keep the lower lights burning. So that no man can perish on the sea of this journey that we walk. Every time I sleep and I don't trim my lamp, the lamp of prayer, when I don't keep the lower lights burning, someone is perishing. Like that ship, they perished. They saw the lighthouse. They couldn't miss it because they struggled to see it.
But the captain said, can we make it to the harbor without the lower lights? And they couldn't make it. Meaning that every time I take time to pray, I'm not only saving myself, I'm saving someone. Someone might be worried, thinking about, when will Jesus come? I'm tired of this world. I'm tired of this pain. I'm tired of this stress. But every time you whisper a prayer for someone, you're uplifting them from the distress, from the doubt, from the pain that they are going through. And the question is, now that prayer transforms everyone, transforms a situation in life, where can we pray from? When you check the spirit of prophecy, it says that prayer is something that makes me open up my heart to God, pour out what is inside the mind of my heart, to tell it openly to my God. And when I'm doing that, I don't need a venue. I don't need to be worried that I must be in church, I must be at my workplace. It is everywhere in sense. You speak everything you think, and God will be able to avenge, to offer justice, to answer according to his will, because he's our father. Because without him, we are not able. That's why I looked at Luke 11, chapter 11, verse 13, and the Bible is saying, Jesus was speaking to his friends, and then he told them, if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give you the Holy Spirit when you ask? Meaning that, as I start my prayer life, the prayer that can bring transformation in a life, in a situation, in an environment, I must ask for the Holy Spirit to be my guide. Because when he guides, everything shall land safely. And actually, the Bible tells us that when we ask, for us, we don't know how to pray. But every time we invite the Holy Spirit, he channels our prayers in the language that God best understands. And then we are able to pray, and God is able to answer. I'll give you a scenario. There is a church that was praying, and the church was challenged. They didn't know what to do. Like Kampala Central Church is surrounded by many things around, many businesses that you can think about. Businesses that may be for the church and also against the church as far as worship is concerned. So there was a church and they had a neighborhood of a bar. Every time they thought about this bar, they got irritated. They didn't know what to do. And then it is said that one day, the owner of the bar, having seen it thriving and becoming growing and break and make it bigger, expanding the bar. Now the, choir, the church members became concerned and they said, what can we do about this annoying business? So they said, we are going to set up off time to pray and fast. They surely did the prayer and fasting. Praying that this bar can collapse, praying that this bar can close, praying that this bar can go away. And it goes that one day, uh, okay, as they continue praying, the construction also continued going on. So they started wondering whether really is go God is going to do something because the thing was going up, the construction, the construction, until it was done and it was ready to open in one week's time. It is said that in that one week, as they prepared the grand opening of the bar, fire came, gutted everything, and the bar was no more. Now, do you know what happened? I don't know what you've interpreted in that. <laughs> Did God answer the prayer? Did he answer the prayer? Now, it's interesting, because the bar owner decided to go to court. He went to court and reported, or opened a case against the church. And he said, this church is responsible for the burning of my bar. So they called them in court, the church. Now, it is sad because when they went, the judge told them that you're responsible for the burning of this church and we are going to charge you. The owner of the bar continued to say, I know that the prayers of those people are responsible for the burning of my church, of my bar. When the church members listened, for them they didn't remember very easily 
that God can answer in unpredictable ways. They kept saying, we don't know anything about the action of the burning. And it's interesting because the judge said, now that you can't judge between both of you, I can't make a judgment on that case because I don't know whether it's the bar owner who is the prayer warrior or the church. <laughs> it was very interesting. They had prayed, but they didn't know how God is going to answer. That's why I'm saying that God is leading is in unexpected ways, unpredictable. So when we pray, are we ready to see that it's God answering? So the church left the court saying they are not responsible for the actions of the burning. But the bar owner was convinced that the prayers of those people were responsible for the burning. Can we be able to defend what God has fought for when we pray? That is something that comes to you, that comes to me. I think about it, and sometimes we have a doubting heart as we pray. So when we pray with a heart that is submitted to God in faith and not in doubt, we shall be able to see the action of God. We shall be able to see the power in our lives, and we shall be able to know that that is God leading. And the reverse is true if we do not submit our full hearts to God. In other words, when we pray, because our God is mighty and can work in many ways, we must be able to trust his answering. The question is, does he answer yes all the time? I say prayer transforms lives in many ways. It can transform my life. It, it can transform a situation. There is a situation that has disturbed you. Probably you've prayed and prayed about it for some time. You've even given up. There are some people who have said, I've prayed for this, and I no longer talk about it with my God. He knows it and will work on it at his time. I want to tell you, friends, it's not yet over until it's over. Keep praying, keep trusting the Lord, because he's faithful, and you never know when he will answer and how he will answer. Uh, I want us to share briefly six ways that God has been able to use prayer to transform a life. Don't forget, we are looking at transformed by prayer. And as we think about it, as we talk about it, think about your prayer life. How many times do you involve a neighbor in your prayer? Because we said the lower lights are our prayers. Every time the lower lights are, something wrong will happen to the sea, to the ship. Something wrong will happen to the seaman. Who is you and who is me? And every time we keep the lower lights burning, good things will happen because we shall be able to reach the harbor safely without crashing. Number one, prayer accords us the assurance of forgiveness and cleansing from sin and the hope of eternal life. What is here is that the Bible has given us a way to come to God. After having spoken to the Holy Spirit and asking God to give him to us in full amount, we are able to whisper to him, one, we acknowledge that he's creator, we are creatures. He's sinless, we are sinners. And the Bible says that when we are sinful, we cannot approach the throne of God. That's why we start by confessing our sins. And in 1 John chapter 2, verse 9, the Bible says that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us all, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's until we achieve that status that we can be able to have the confidence. And I want to tell you, friends, there is no way you can check and say, now that my sins have been cleansed, I can now approach. No, we go to God in faith. We approach with faith, with boldness. You just tell him your heart, then you tell him everything you need. Because he's faithful, he's just, and he's ready to forgive. There is no way it is written that now, I've forgiven you, now ask for what you want. But God is saying, when we trust that he's faithful in what he says, we just pour out our prayer. We confess what we've done wrong. Tell him, Lord, we pray that you forgive us. And then we are able to open our hearts to God. He's ready to listen. You can whisper your prayer anywhere, even now. It might be something that is challenging you, and you want to tell it to God just now. 
he's seeing that open heart. It's not let, and with him, it's never let. He just works in time. I call God JIT, just in time, J-I-T. He's never let. He's always just in time. So when he doesn't give it to you that time, he has a reason. Maybe he has a better answer. Maybe he's saying this way, my son, not that way. And so I want to encourage you, once we confess our sins, we have the assurance that really prayer can give us transformation. How are we transformed when our sins are forgiven? One, we get what we call a guilt-free conscience. And there is nothing more powerful than a guilt-free conscience. Because when you look here and people are saying, that woman, you look here, that woman, you can't be confident. But when you walk high with your heart and you know that my God has said, my son, you're forgiven, it gives us confidence. It gives us the joy to be able to approach. That's why we are saying that for us to be transformed by prayer, one, we must have the confidence that our God has forgiven us once we confess. Because he says he's faithful and just to forgive. Number two, God's power is revealed when we pray. God's power is revealed when we pray. The Bible in James chapter 5 verse 16 says that the fervent, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now this is very interesting friends because many times you may say, can I pray for this situation? Am I fit to do it? Am I the right person to do it? But God is saying that when we pray in faith, our prayer that we whisper can avail much, can find favor in the presence of God. And then we have a story. Let's look at uh, Acts chapter 12. We shall not read the whole of it, but I'll give you what is there. Acts chapter 12 verses 1 to 17. When you read those verses, they tell us about our friend Peter. Peter and James were taken to prison, the Bible says. And Herod, who was the king that time, decided to kill James, who was a brother to John Mark. So when he killed him, it is said that the Pharisees were very happy. And Herod knew that they were pleased when he killed James. And so he said, I'm going to make sure Peter remains in prison for some time. Probably he was planning to kill him as well. But the Bible says in verse 5 that Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but the prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. I loved that verse, friends. Because when Peter was taken to prison, the church, just as we are seated here, assuming our pastor is taken to prison for preaching Christ, maybe our elder, anyone, maybe a church member, is imprisoned because of preaching Christ. And then the church, as we are seated, remain praying without ceasing. You don't know what God can do. Just like the first story, where they were not sure what God was going to do. Even this time, it was not sure how God was going to do it. Whether he was going to leave him in prison, like John the Baptist, whether he was going to deliver him out of the prison, it was all in the hands of God. So the Bible says they prayed. They sang, they prayed day and night. I'm imagining they were not even going back home, praying to see that their saint, their friend, their pastor, their preacher man comes out of prison, and they were praying for release. Now the Bible says that God had the prayer. And he sent an angel of the Lord. Now, how many of us can receive an angel in our lives? Can we discern that that is the angel of the Lord? How do we welcome him? Can we be able to know that he's the one? Now, that is what happened. God sent an angel of the Lord into the prison cell. And it's interesting because the Bible says, Peter was put in the inner cell, having door one, door two, before you can now go out into the streets and walk. And when he was put in chains, this way, there was a guard. This way, a prison guard. On the door, a prison guard. The next door, a prison guard. In the streets, they were watching for the only one, Peter. 
and here comes the angel of the Lord. And the Bible says that the angel of the Lord found Peter resting. He awoke him. He released, he loosed the chains. The chains fell off. And when they fell off, the angel told him, please come follow me. Wow. It looks like a movie. But that's how God does his things. It happened. So Peter marched and the angel was leading. And as he marched, the Bible says, he passed through the first gate, passed through the second gate, went to the streets. The God, that's why we speak to ways. In unexpected ways. You just trust him and you see what he will do. So what happened is, they reached the streets. The angel led him somewhere. And the Bible says that when Peter was now able to understand that, oh, I'm out of the prison, the angel left him. And he walked to the place of the mother of John Mark, where the church had gathered to pray. Now, this is very interesting, friends. I asked a question that can we discern when God is answering? Think about it again, because it's happening again. They had a knock. Ah, praying are closed, but we are praying, and the knock. They was, who is, who is knocking? And the Bible says they sent a maid servant called Rhoda. She came to the door. She didn't open. Normally when someone knocks at night, you don't open immediately. You first listen. You can even ask who is there. Then someone will say, Peter. Then when he said Peter, it is told that Rhoda understood the voice of Peter. But she didn't open. She ran back to the church and told them, you know what? Peter is at the door. Do you know what the people said? Praying. And they were praying for the release. They said it can't be. That is the ghost. That should be Peter's spirit. Don't mention it. And the girl insisted and said, no, it's Peter. But he said, not as I will, but your will be done. It was heavy. Because the cross that Jesus died on is called the worst death that you can think about. Cast form, curse. He was a curse for us. But it's because he said, let God's will be done. And the question is, as we wait to be transformed by, by prayer, are we ready for any answer that comes from God? After being able to discern that this is coming from God, are we able to receive it with joy? Because when Christ noted that the will of the Father was that you carry the cup, you take the cup, he said, Father, let your will be done. And he took the cup. That's why me and you have the hope that we are going to see him one day and tell him, thank you, Jesus, because your prayer was not answered in Gethsemane. I want to encourage you, friends, that when you pray and things don't happen the way you want, it's not because God is silent. Remember, the memory text was saying that, and shall not God avenge his own elect who cry unto him day and night, though he bear with them long. Meaning that he is ready to give justice. Sometimes he may hurry, sometimes he may delay, but in all cases, he is working. Amen? Amen. Amen. Number four, God changes our selfish nature when we pray so that we don't exalt ourselves, but we uplift others. And here, the scripture comes from Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. When you read Philippians, where I've known, I'll not read, but I'll tell you what is there. The Bible says that we should have the spirit that was in Jesus Christ. The spirit in such a way that when Christ knew that he was God, he did not take it by force to say that I'm God. But he took the lower form, humbled himself up to the cross, yet he was God. Now men are very proud, me inclusive. We are very proud. Eh? When they call you engineer, even when you don't have the money, you are an engineer. Isn't it? They may call you or not, but you are. At the workplace, there are powers that we have. And people will say, engineer, can we arrest? Engineer, can we do this? Engineer, can we do this? That power. You are the one making the decisions. When you say yes, it happens. When you say no, it doesn't. Now, that power comes with a challenge. 
because it needs a humble spirit to be able to hold that power. Put your title there at work. Some of us forget and carry the titles even back home. And then the house becomes a, a wave, hmm? boat on that wave. Because you've carried the title from where it should be to where it should not be. Now, it's interesting because when we ask God to be in our lives, he changes our attitude. He removes that selfish nature of thinking about ourselves. And then we place others on top. Why? Because he knows that when we exalt others, his name will be glorified. And here I have an example. That when we are in prayer and we live to the feeble men of God, they are saved. Remember the lower lights. You might not have something to pray for, but the moment you keep the lower lights burning, praying for a neighbor, praying for a dying soul, praying, praying for someone who needs help, you're uplifting that person. And when you uplift them, what happens is God is glorified. People look and say, how has God known my problem? Not because he's silent. He knows everything. But because there is a neighbor who has pointed at it to God, and God will answer in a miraculous way. And when we don't pray, we are not lifting others. We are bringing ourselves instead. Now, whenever we exalt ourselves, we are not able to exhibit or to show the power of Christ in our lives. So I encourage you, friends, never cease to pray for someone. Never. Number five. Prayer teaches me to look up to God and not to myself. Prayer helps me to look up to God and not to myself. For example, the achievements that we have. Many times God has written achievements in our lives. And every time we know that it's because of God, we are able to point at God. But whenever we lose focus of that, we will say, ah, we did our best. Now exams came back yesterday for senior six. I want to believe there are some students who are saying, huh, if we didn't sleep less and read hard, probably we wouldn't achieve this. It, if it wasn't for our teachers, if it wasn't for this and this. But I want to tell you, there is nothing that can go above God. Just like those people said that this is the finger of God. When things are good, it's the finger of God. I want to tell you. Whatever good is happening in your life, it's because of the finger of God. And if you could only withdraw the finger, things cannot be the same. So we need to look up to God. Prayer transforms our lives in such a way that we lift up God, look up to him, and not fellow man. Acts chapter 3 verse 6 talks about Peter. Peter, the disciple, was, talking, was walking to the temple. And he came alongside this gentleman who was always brought in every day to ask for help from those who are going to church. You know when you come to church, people think that you have it all. Sometimes it's you coming to pray. But for them, they know that once you've come, for you are well off, now it's them who need. But sometimes it's not, eh? because our God sees the heart. I know that as we come, we come with our requests, and it's only God who knows them. Even the person you think that he's well off might have a challenge. And he's only whispering it to his God. But it's not a small challenge. So what happens is, don't forget to look around those people whenever possible. So it was with Peter. Peter, I can look at him as a pastor. You're coming to Kampala Central Church. Now sometimes you say, what can I give the people of Kampala Central Church? If you are to give them a gift, think about it as an individual. What can you give them? Maybe they tell you, can you give a gift to Pastor Benon? I don't know what you'd give him. Maybe, can you give a gift to Elder Kevin? Maybe they say, can you give a gift to the president of Uganda? I don't know what gift you can give. Because maybe you think they have it all. Even the little you'll bring might become a drop in the ocean. And it might not be the case. Now this has happened to Peter. Peter was coming to the temple. And as he came, the man, that blind man who was always kept by the nearness of the church, saw them come, I mean, heard them coming. He kept asking for help, and he cried. Actually, he was not blind, but he was lame, so he could see them coming. 
he cried to them and told them, please help with anything that you have. Help with anything you have. And the Bible says, in Acts chapter 3, verse 6, Peter said, silver and gold I don't have. But what I have is what I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, I said that when we pray, prayer teaches us to look up to God and not to ourselves. I believe by the time Peter was able to walk around and preach the gospel, he saw some of the miraculous things that God was doing in his life. Probably he would now be able to say, I'm a good pastor. When I pray, things happen. I'm a good pastor. When I speak, people listen. But he didn't do that. He kept looking at the giver. He said, silver and gold I don't have. But what I have is what I give you. So we are getting transformed by prayer when we know the source of our strength and we point it to the people in need. Even when they, have, they need what you have, tell them it's not enough. I need to point you to the giver because for him he can give you much more than you need. The gentleman was waiting for money to keep him going, maybe to get some money every day. But Peter gave him what was extremely good. He got back his limbs. And the Bible says he kept jumping, praising the Lord and singing, went to the temple. Maybe he was not even able to go to the temple because every time he was waiting for help. And God gave him the best. He didn't give the money, the cash, but he gave him the best. Because the Bible says he rose up, he jumped, he sang, he praised the God of heaven and went singing. What are we able to give? When we pray, we are not only transforming our lives. We are not only transforming the situations in our lives, but we are uplifting Christ. And when we uplift him, those who don't know him will be able to know that there is God in heaven who cares. There is God in heaven who can answer prayers. There is God in heaven who can make ways where there seems to be no ways. And number six says, prayer transforms us in difficult times. Hard times increase our faith. Now, I know many of us don't want to hear about hard times, isn't it? We don't want to hear about hard times because they stress us. They challenge us. They make us think harder. We don't know where to begin and where to end. And it's very annoying because a hard situation can never tell you when it will stop. It's like when you're looking for a job, you can only pray and trust God that one day. But you can't know when. You don't know whether it will be one year, one month, one week, one day, many years. Now that is what happened to a lady called Hannah in the Bible. She faced hard times. Now a brief of this is that Hannah was a co-wife to a lady called Penina. The two stayed in the same home. Very interesting. Same husband, two wives. This one getting children, this one nothing. And the Bible says that God had closed the womb of Hannah. Now, friends, there are situations that are hard that come our way, but we can't even explain them. And it's only the finger of God that can explain them. Because the Bible says that God had closed the womb of Hannah, but poor Penina, who didn't know, kept harassing Hannah, that you woman who is childless, you woman who doesn't know this, you woman who has no children, everything they did was rotating about you woman who, don't, who doesn't have a child. Now I want to tell you that there are situations that come our way and God has let them be because of his glory. Because when he says that he op closed the womb of Hannah, it means God had an appointed time when he would open the womb for everyone to see the name of God. And the story says that Hannah, after getting all that pain, that hassle, that insult from the co-wife, she said, no, enough is enough. I'm going to report it to my God. So she rose up, went to the temple. Now, the Bible says they used to go to the temple. They used to go take offerings, take everything. Then they would also give offerings through the children. Hannah didn't have anyone. And the husband was telling her, after all, you have me as your husband and I love you. Am I not better than ten sons and whatever? But was it true? I don't know. Because it's only God who can understand the pain 
that befalls us. So Hannah decided to pour her heart to open up the privacy of the mind to, his, to her God. And the Bible says she prayed on that one day when God was about to change things. She prayed and the high priest was seated at the back at the door just like the deacon can stand there to see that are my people well in church. If someone looking for a seat, they look around to help. So the high priest Eli was seated out there near the door entering. And then he saw this woman. The woman was praying and he couldn't hear anything but the Bible says that it was the mouth moving like this. Like this. And then the priest said, you woman who is drunk, why did you come with your drunkenness to the church of God? I don't know what you can answer today. What would you tell Pastor Benon if he's telling you that you've come drunk in the church and you're praying, but for him he thinks that you've drunk? It's very interesting. I don't know how the answers would be, but some of us who are very quick might even turn out of prayer and say, Musumba, what has happened? What have I done? You would attack. Now the Bible says that Hannah did not attack, but she said, my Lord, I'm a poor woman. I'm just pouring out my heart to my God, telling him my problem. And out of a humble spirit, the priest told Hannah, may your God hear your prayer. Friends, I want to tell you that God is going to deliver you in that pain. Maybe you've prayed for it for some time. Maybe God is waiting for this women's day of prayer to give you an vengeance. I want to tell you that God is not silent about your prayer. Amen. And so the Bible says that Hannah went home and God answered the prayer. She got a child. She had prayed for a son. She got a son and she had told God that when you give me a son, my God, he will serve you all his life. God answered the prayer. And God answered in a mightier way because he did not only give Hannah Samuel, but the Bible says she received other three children. In other words, they became four children to Hannah, who was a childless woman. And what does that mean? God's name was lifted. I want to believe wherever Elkanah was, the husband, and Hannah, I mean Penina, they must have looked and said, mm, there is a God in heaven, a God who answers prayers. And maybe some neighbors of yours are waiting and seeing, will she overcome that challenge this time? I want to tell you there is God in heaven. And when he answers, he will answer in a mighty way. This is what I wrote. That prayer changes situations. It might be what you're calling a hard time in your life. Don't get worried. Because God is in charge. And I said that when he's still in his throne room, we can pour out our hearts. Not forgetting that he said, come boldly, approach with faith, and you'll not remain the same. And as we finish our someone, this is what I have to say. That look at the situation you're going through. Have you been transformed by your prayer life? Do you want to add something to it? Determine to keep the lower lights burning bright because they will keep safe into the center line to our eternal home as well as guiding men to the Savior Jesus Christ. May God bless us as we keep the lower lights burning. Happy Sabbath and God bless you.
shall we pray? Our God and Father in heaven, we thank you so much because you've prepared us to open our hearts to you that we can be transformed. We pray that our lamps should be trimmed and burning because your coming is very near. Let us be able to be the lower lights that can uplift others, that can uplift situations, that can uplift ourselves, and together we shall be able, by the lighthouse, to be able to see the harbor and reach the harbor that is our eternal home. We humbly pray that no situation shall break our faith in you, but we shall strongly wait patiently for your coming in prayer, in faith, in worship, so that when you come, none of us shall miss, but we shall all be able to get to heaven, to see Jesus who died for us. Thank you for listening to our prayer, Lord. May you be the answer to every prayer in the heart of everyone who is standing before you. Whatever they are presenting to you, Lord, you know it best. We humbly pray that you answer according to your will and give us the patience and the discernment to know that this is our good answering in mighty ways. Continue, be, continue to be blessed forever. Thank you for listening to us. Bless us all for the Sabbath day, for we humbly thank you and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. But before, God is good all the time. It's such a fine and calm weather. You can look through the window and sing. I'm called Brian. I'm here on behalf of the God family, the choir that sang previously right before you, before the sermon. Today we have prepared a delicious meal, and I'm seeing your number, we have enough food for all of you. So I'm requesting the visitors, if you find it convenient for you, you can join any of the families, or you can take the front seat. I'm sure we shall serve you appropriately. Uh, God family, we sit uh, under the mango tree over there, next to the children's chapel. So, if you're a visitor, you can join and share with us today. So, I'm going to pray for the meal. I request you that you humble yourselves and we pray. Mighty Father in heaven, you have been so good to us that you have protected us till this day. And yet today you provided us another meal. Now that we are going to have it and take it, I pray that may you bless it so that it may be for our health. In Jesus' name I pray. Maybe a small communication from the women's department. Ladies, tomorrow you have a social day and we are leaving this place at 8 a.m. Please keep time so that you can be there at night. May God bless you. 